Good morning, everybody. How are you today? Hope you're doing all right. Let's get a bit of a uh, little bit of bird song on there in the background. Just keep it mellow. Make it feel like it's a nicer day than it is. Really grotty out there, isn't it? It really is. I hope you're doing all right anyway. <coughs> and um, we'll hopefully have a nice morning doing a bit of pencilling. I've got any new people in today. Do say hello. So I know we've got five of you. Lovely to have five of you with me. Excellent. Weird that it's Thursday already this week. <clears throat> it's flying by this week. Morning Marie, morning Janet. But you're right. Good morning, Clemmy. Good morning, April. Um, you know, it's not wet. It's it's freezing fog here. <clears throat> and um unfortunately I, I am not coming to you from um the shop today. I'm coming to you from my home. And the reason is, obviously, some of you may know, I don't know, is that um, I put my uh, back out on Friday evening. Hello, Frosty Kent. I know. Do you know what? It's frosty here this morning, and that's the reason why I'm 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 working from home today. Um, because I, I put my back out on Friday. I think I've slipped a disc or trapped a nerve or both or something. I've been in absolute agony. And um, yesterday I did actually manage to get in the car for the first time since last Friday and drive to work. Jackie had been picking me up before to do some other things. And, um, oh dear, it really wiped me out. But this morning when I saw all the frost and the ice and um, everything, I thought I'm not going to be able to, A, I'm not going to be able to scrape the windscreen off. Um, because I can't reach and I can't bend I'm going to be panicking and, and be quite tense because it's cold anyway which isn't really that good um, for my back and um, I thought you know what I've got I've got lo I, it is painful Janet I've got loads of um, stuff like I've, I've got I've got sort of the equipment here so I can I can do it um, so I'm trying to rest as much as I can but I'm also got to try and earn a living haven't I and I don't want to let any of you lot down. So here we are this morning at home. Um, I'm on a slope. I'm not normally on a slope. Um, those of you from the first lockdown can remember when I did all the classes from home, that slope. I ended up losing pencils and all sorts, but it's fine. It's fine. But it's lovely to have you with me anyway. So we've got a nice electric. Hello, Rosary. Good morning. Um... No, um, I'm not on Discord today because I'm, I'm at home um, and I haven't got any of that set up here. Um, so no, no Discord this morning. Um, I'm not a bit better today. I'm a lot, I'm, I'm a lot worse in the sense that I think I overdid it yesterday um, and um, I'm paying the price. Oh, thank you, April. Bless you. I'll be, I'll be fine. Do you know, um, I've been heating and cold, I've ice packs as well. I've, I've, I was told by a chiropractor to put an ice pack on it every now and again a couple of times a day. So I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. But I'm a massive baby. Um, I don't like pain and I, I don't like being um, sort of incapacitated. In in any form, I'm I'm terrible. I really am. Um, so uh, I'm not the best patient. Do 
Yeah, do you know what? I'll explain how I did it because there's quite a few of you that haven't heard me whinging. I actually, um, I was chopping up the Christmas tree in the living room on Friday evening. I de Christmased it all and I was, because what I did, I buy a real tree, it's more expensive, but then it's my fuel for January when I can bend down um, to light the fire. And uh, so I was chopping all the Christmas tree up and then I was on my hands and knees on the floor, bending, stretching, bagging all the, the bits up. And just as I stood up to move the bag to get another bag, because, you know, there's a lot of tree, um, my back went totally. Caught it at 11 on the Friday evening. Um, and that's it. So my house, <laughs> my house has um, just a tree trunk in the corner of it, uh, two bags of Christmas tree branches, a pile of Christmas tree branches not yet bagged, and um, pine needles all over the floor. I've still got half my decorations up because I can't reach, I can't bend, I can't sort, um, I can't vacuum, I can't do anything, and it's, and it's horrible. So it's going to be half Christmas in my house for a couple more weeks, I imagine. Um, I, I am seeing slight, so I'm not, I'm not moaning. Um, I, I am moaning. Um, I, I'm seeing slight improvements every day, occasionally, as long as I don't overdo it. And that's, that's my fault, because those of you that know me know I'm always on the go. And I'm struggling to not be on the go. So that's what I find really tricky. So today we're going to be looking at now, which is my old tin, which is my new tin. Let's see if we can get these out a little bit. I don't think I need that mouse for the moment. I can pop that there. And that's my new tin. Ooh, look at that beautiful new shiny shiny. Okay. I can put all my bits in those tins and that'll save me having to lunge, won't it? I've got a putty rubber, that is a putty rubber. I know I know it looks um absolutely manky, but it is grey to start with and um it's just a bit dirty, but it should do the trick. I've got an embossing tool, a biro lid will work. Um and you'll need you'll need an eraser. Um I will probably be using um I need this to read the comments, don't I? Mm. What was I saying? I can't remember now. Anyway, so this is my old laptop that um, keeps giving me a warning of hard drive failure. So, fingers crossed, that doesn't happen this morning and um, we're all right. So I I might have I, I might make something a little bit more on the base of this picture maybe some fir trees or something really dark silhouette in front of the lightning storm Now obviously we're working in pencil only um so you don't see pretty colors and um you know and I say this a lot in my drawing classes and and I know I think some of you um you're fairly new, aren't you, to these classes, but you may have watched my drawing demo on Saturday. Um, the difference is when you imagine a, fruit, a bowl of fruit. OK, so you've got a bowl of fruit. Even if you're a bit of a beginner at painting with a, a yellow curve, an orange circle and a green circle in a semicircle of blue, you've got a banana, an apple, an orange in a blue bowl. Um, and you can pass it off as sort of... Um, abstract or impressionist I suppose so even with little skill the colour helps determine what we're seeing but in pencil that can't be there it's all about tone and it's about understanding light and dark and you're fully reliant on various tones of greys um, to help you out and that's where it gets a little bit trickier now. Obviously, this is supposed to be a, a, a nice, easy, more restful style of teaching on a Thursday morning. So, um, and I need that myself today. Um, I'm painting um, 
snowdrops in watercolours is happening. Um, so you have to work out when you're looking at the photo, and if you look at the reference photo on the screen, what is the lightest colour in that picture, or the brightest colour, is actually the lightning, isn't it? That's, that's the lightest. So what we have to try and do is work out a way of making sure that that lightning stays bright. And there are a couple of ways we can do that. So as long as the, the brightest colour stays the brightest colour, then we're all right. However, also remember that the brightest colour we can work with in pencil form is the colour of our paper. It can't be any brighter than that because that's the colour of it. So to make it appear brighter, you have to make your darks darker. So to make a bright brighter, you have to make the dark darker. Contrast is key. I think it's important that we discuss it all instead of just always lunging straight into things. And I do this a lot in the drawing classes as well, um, which we chatted about yesterday, didn't we? Um, to those that, Rosemary, I know you were there, on the drawing class. Um, and one student asked a really clever question. They said to me, when you look at a picture, how do you know what to draw first? Or how do you know how to tackle any picture? Because, you know, to a degree, I do all of that for you. I mean, we do talk about it and we go through it step by step. But I think the hardest thing is, is then if you then go and sit at home and maybe you Google lightning photos or something because you want to try and do it again. You think, well, how on earth do I start it? And to be fair, it is different for every single picture that we look at. Um, but for me, the main structure is actually the lightning in this because it holds everything together. It links the sky to the land um, and it will hopefully help plan it out a little bit. So, excuse me, I was just yawning then. I am awake, I promise. <coughs> I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. Um, the lightning. Now, what's difficult, and I, I hate using that word, Rosemary, don't panic then. I know, I know you love a good panic, but um, <laughs> not not yet. Um, is that how, how do you get the structure of the lightning that's white on a white piece of paper? And that's, and that's, that's a tricky bit. What we're actually going to do, I'm going to use a 2B or an HB pencil. Um, now, if you remember, my HB is a lot softer. Um, no, it's the whole sky. Basically, the, that bottom line of colour, right, right on the bottom, is actually city lights and roads. So all of that, literally the whole page, is a sky. I know. But we're going we're gonna to tweak it a little bit. So what I want to do, very lightly, now you may not be... <laughs> you may not... You can panic if you like, Rosemary. Um, you may not be able to see my line on here. Um... But I'm going to roughly draw where I want the main bit of lightning coming down. And I'm not even going to draw it exactly how I want it. So it comes down. Can you see that at all? No. I'm going to go a bit darker. Don't you go darker though. I'm only going darker. So you can see where to put it. It does help if you think like lightning. And you want to go... Like that. And then there's another brighter bit that comes from about halfway. Just, just below halfway. And that comes down. And wiggles. Now, I know we've done this darker. But this will give us a bit of an idea where the main areas of lightning are i know this picture really spoke to me and i'd i'd um 
I'd love to um, do this in another class. I think acrylics would be a bit difficult. What do you reckon, Rose? Acrylics or watercolour? What what would work best if you were to do this in another medium? I think it's just the fact that I'm right in my dining window and it's really bright. Um, because I'm on a different camera, I'm on a webcam today that I've got <laughs> masking taped to a stand. Um, I think watercolours would be quite nice because you could masking fluid the uh, the lightning and do really nice um, wet in wet clouds maybe. That could work. Perhaps. Hmm. Anyway. So I've got my two main bits of lightning. Now, they're going to be the brightest bits of lightning. Watercolour inks. Yeah, inks would be fascinating on, on nice heavy paper. You could you could mask out the watercolour the, the lightning with the ink, I suppose, and then really go in. You want the strength of colour. There's um it's not artist quality at all, but there are watercolour dyes. Um, we sell them in like little round stacky things for £10 um, for 24 colours. And they're so punchy. They're called Analinky watercolour dyes. Um, they do fade over a while, so if you put it on a wall, it would, um, it would fade after a couple of years. But... Um, to do a painting and then to take prints off or something, that would work really well. Because they're really, whoa, really punchy stuff. Um, so that could work, yeah. Morning, Brenda. Yeah, and in, in acrylics, you see, would be good. But I think it would be hard to get the blend in that sky with acrylics. It would take a real bit of skill. Right, so what I'm going to do, this, this paper's underneath for uh, protecting... The next sheet of paper because uh, we're going to emboss so if you've got an embossing tool that would be good if you have a um, biro lid you can use that in the same way I'm just hunting to see if I can find a biro lid which I did on the demo on Saturday. Can't believe how popular that demo was, by the way. Amazing. Thank you for joining in. Um, I haven't looked for a couple of days, but it had two and a half thousand views by Monday morning. Um, right, so I'm going to emboss, not the lightning we've drawn, because that's the brightest. We need some finer... Um, what, what, what's a section of lightning called? Fork. Is it a fork? I want to call it a crackle. I'm going to call it a crackle today. Um, so I'm going to emboss. Now you definitely won't see where I'm putting this because of the way the light is. Um, there's one here that's going. It goes up again and then curves. There's a fork. I think I like a crackle of lightning. I'm going to say that forever and a day now. A section of lightning is called a crackle. It's probably got a much fancier name. But you know me. If I can make up a word, I will. So I'm just embossing. So whether you're using the biro lid or an embossing tool, um, that's fine. And then there is one that then goes and that joins to that line I might have to shut the curtain maybe I've got to, I, it's weird it's one of the dullest days outside let's see if I can close the curtain just a, a fraction does that help? No. Mm, okay. 
Join to that again. A little offshoot. It's all interconnected, isn't it? Just wobbly and jerky. Wow, well, there's uh, the more I'm looking. The more of this I can see, I think you can see a little bit now. I'm going through that, but I'm not going through enough because what I'd hate to do, I, I can't remember what next um, Wednesday's drawing. Oh, it won't be. It could be next Tuesday evening is drawing, and that's snowdrops. Um, I don't want lightning forks or lightning crackles in me snowdrops. Okay, there's another bit there, some of this is going off on one, there, so I'm not doing the main fork of lightning, this is the finer, because the main forks, or the main crackles, are going to be erased, hopefully. What crackles? Crackle of lightning, isn't it? The clap of thunder. It crack. It does crackle. I should have thunderstorm background music on or something. Should have bird song because generally there isn't any bird song when it's lightning, is there? Give you a few. I see if I can hold it up to the the light a little bit more, so you can, or away from the light, you can just about make out the crackles. They look a bit like folds or creases in the paper. So that the main crackles are visible. If you let me know when you've done that, because I don't want to rush you. Minus two here today in North Oxfordshire. Minus two. We haven't really had winter yet, have we? Kind of escaped it. We had a flurry of snow yesterday morning, like big, excellent, thank you, April. Um, big Dickensian snowflakes were falling here yesterday morning. It's about, I don't know, eight, nine o'clock. Um, didn't stick, sadly. Well, not sadly, because I had to 
come in I wouldn't have been able to go into work yesterday either um, but uh, I do like looking at the snow when I haven't got to work or when I'm able to actually walk XL that's good thank you Clemmy are you watching now um, Brenda and then doing later I think sometimes that's not a bad bad shout you can have the company listen to the gossip learn the lesson and then watch it again later on or you know mute me or whatever you want to do or oh, if only people worked out uh, how to mute me in real life I think they'd love it that's not great Brenda um, slow progress every day um, when I went into the shop yesterday I think um, the cafe were quite surprised at how <laughs> how immobile I am because I'm having to use a walking stick and I'm I'm sort of shuffling very slowly um, and having to take one step at a time if I'm having to go upstairs you know how steep the the, class, the, the shop stairs are uh, being a old building and uh, yes it's, uh, it's it's not great I'm swearing like a sailor most times so I'm having to retrain my brain now I'm you see, when, when you work in primary education, you don't swear at all. Um, and because I come from primary education, I spent many years never swearing, ever, because you just don't. Um, but I've been out of primary education for a long time. Um, and, uh, and with this backache, especially when the spasm and the sharp pain hits, my word, the stuff coming out of my mouth is just disgusting. I'm ashamed. <laughs> And I've just got to hope that I don't get a spasm, or if I do get a spasm, I remember that I'm teaching and I'm live. <laughs> and you don't hear colourful phrases um, from me. It'll all be words that you've heard before, I'm sure, but um, I don't want to have to put a, an 18 sticker on my, uh, on my lessons. OK, so we've got that. We've then got to think about the layering of the clouds. And in very much the same way as we would think in watercolour, you, you work from light to dark in pencil. And um, and there's a very simple reason for that in, in drawing, why we do that, is because you can't rub out the darker pencil, sort of like the softer pencil, as easily as you can the lighter tones. So it's just a fail-safe, really, that you gradually get darker to try and um, save yourself so you can tweak it a little bit, because you can always go darker. It's harder to go lighter, especially if you look at the sky. It's sort of like the top right corner and the bottom left corner are much, much darker. If we went in with that too soon, we would struggle. We need it, because we said about contrast, didn't we, at the beginning. We need that contrast um, of the darks to make the light look lighter. Um, but if we go in too soon, then it could be a bit of an issue. So I'm going to stick with my, my 2B, or my HB, and I'm just going to pop it on its side. And I'm going to be quite gentle and do a sort of swirly motion and I'm not using any graphite powder yet and the reason for that is I know quite a few of you we, we still haven't we can't get any in stock um, but the graphite powder will actually fill in the crackles that we've created that's my clock it's all right because i'm at home um i live in a 18th century part 19th century cottage i wish i don't i don't own it and it is very tiny i wish i did um and uh it's very 1940s inside and um i have wind up chiming clocks in every room now I know that's not to everybody's taste, but you don't have to live here, I do. Um, and I find ticking clocks very restful. So 
so I'm not pressing down too hard I'm basically just going over I'm going to use um, a tortillon or you could use your finger or a paper stump or a cotton bud now what why I've got my pencil on its side is so oh sorry I've just headbutted the camera there um, is so the point of the pencil doesn't also fill in the crackles that we've got drawn because by going over on its side it just allows us to highlight the crackles I need to put my thumb down on that keep my um, pad from moving I could use a graphite stick now the reason why I'm not using gra a graphite stick for this is because it gives me too much texture I don't want texture yet um, so it is a bit labor intensive but well worth it I should have started from the top but I wanted to show you can just about see that where the crackles are that we embossed they're standing out and the reason why I'm doing more um, ovals or swirls is because it stops having lots of lines all going in the same direction you know like when you when you color in I never color in like that I used to obviously when I was younger because um, that's what everybody does but if you use it as more of a swirl or an oval shape it um, actually makes for a more even distribution of the pencil graphite don't forget it's not lead we learned on Saturday, didn't we, that uh, pencil is not lead. Those of you that watch the demo, can you remember the Latin name for graphite? Which is what made people think it was lead. Sorry, I seem to have reverted back to my primary educational teaching. I do apologise. <laughs> Plumbago is the answer. So plumbago is the Latin for graphite. Plumbum is the Latin for lead. So that's why people would talk about lead in your pencil. Thank you, Brenda. You are a star, gold star to you. Um, because it looks a bit like lead, because it's shiny and grey. Um, You know, do you remember when, when I don't know if you did it, it but I went to a an inner city school in the in the black country and uh, high school and everybody was always stabbing each other with pencils and it's like oh no you're going to get lead poisoning now because he stabbed you with your pencil um, obviously that would never happen apparently don't try this at home but you can eat a lump of graphite and it won't do you any harm um because it's a very natural substance. I probably wouldn't fancy it, um, but it can be done. I wouldn't recommend it, nor have I done it. I promise I haven't. So this is just a pale grey all over. And why I've done this is to get the, the paper sort of prepared so I can use my tortillon my smudgy stick as I call it and I can just about still make out apologies for the camera moving the whole desk's moving I'm on a, a Victorian ah yes what's on the cards are being taught this week again you can see I'm swirling well I wish I could swell. I can't even stand up properly. I, I wish I could swell. Um, oh, 
a plumbago plant. Tell me more about this, Brenda. Um, I've gone over everything, yes, Janet. I've gone over the embossing and all lines. I can, because my line's quite dark, I can still just about see it at this point. So, yeah. Also, because this is a sky, by going in a sort of swirly oval motion, it can start to look a little bit more cloud-like. I've never heard of a plumbago plant. That was almost very difficult for me to say. So it will go darker, but you can just about make out the smaller crackles. Now, as we go darker, they're going to stand out more. But we're going to have to be a little bit careful. It's a pleasure, Janet. That is what I'm here for. I'm going to have to Google Plumbago plant now. very pretty. The sky flower. Yes, it's a warm a warm climate thing, isn't it? The sky flower. If you have you ever painted it? If so, what colour blue did you use? Now, should I use my battery eraser? Maybe. Now, if you remember, I said that we have to go from light to dark um, because the lighter colours don't rub out, the, the, the lighter colours rub out better than the darker ones. So, I'm going to use a battery eraser, but you could use any eraser that you've got to now do the lightning. Is it going around there? Ooh. Up and around. As long as I make sure it joins the things that I need it to join. And then we've got this one. The battery eraser is quite fun for this because <laughs> it um, it vibrates and moves your hand in different directions. So we're not we're nowhere near done, by the way. But I wanted that so we can now be careful. and go around it. How are we doing? You've probably just got a lot of grey. Oh, I'm just having to stand up for a sec. Oh. Okay. Um, probably just thinking, oh, I've got a lot of grey with a few squiggles. And it's kind of... Um, Kind of is what it is, though, isn't it? Lightning. But um, you can see that we can gradually get darker and darker and darker now. We've got all of our stuff. We've got our um, all of our lightning plotted. We can then plan the clouds. That's all right. I'm going to stop for a minute. Do you know what? I think we'll make a cup of tea now. Then we can go darker. I'm going to go put the kettle on. And maybe some time. I'm in a different room now. I'm in the dining room. Um, bear with.
house. I'm just navigating how to sit down and then I'll be with you. <laughs> See, I was already sat down before class, so hang on a minute. You know what, Brenda? I never have done any airbrush painting. Um, <clears throat> it's never really appealed to me, but then I see a lot of cake decorators and, and all of the model makers use airbrush, and I think, well, oh, maybe there's something in it. I don't know. Um, so maybe, it's, for me, it's finding the time. And also finding the space for yet another medium because obviously I've got pencils, gouache, acrylics, watercolours, glass paints, um, calligraphy, all manner of stuff um, and uh, yeah I just don't have the, the space all the time but I, I maybe one day I will get into it because um, it does seem really interesting. Right, so I'm going to switch up the pencil to probably a 4B or something like that. To find the right one in my... And then I'm going to start working darker. I'm going to leave some areas lighter. Where they are in the picture. So the lighter areas are sort of lower in the mid-ground here, halfway down. There's a little bit of light and then there's some light coming down here so I'm keeping in with the swirly way of, of working that we did earlier and I'm going to bring that up a little oh, the darker you go the, the more the um, lines are going to stand out, by the way. And uh, because I'm using a tortillon, my smudgy stick, it means I can keep building up and just go near the erased lightning because when I come to smudge it, I can blend in and go up up close to it and I will probably end up going to do more of it but uh, You're more than likely going to get graphite on your hand today. That's all right, isn't it? Shows you've been working hard. have lent on my um, eraser because my uh, my lightning forks have uh, dulled right about where I put my hand so I think I've smudged it but I can re-erase it not a problem Oh yeah, do have a go. Let me know. 
there you get on. You can see how that's starting to bring out, but it's still not as dark as we're going to go. Just work in a little bit here. You see, what I would encourage you to do, I mean, hopefully, hopefully you'll share what you create today in the in the group um, and post it in the comments of the of the group um, later on or whenever it is you do it there's no pressure to post it within the, the first five minutes of the videos ending um, is that when you take a photograph of it it will make it far more contrasting and um, probably a better image for you. Now, I'm not saying that your drawing is going to be bad. Um, what I'm saying is that the photograph brings out the contrast more. So let's go a little bit darker sort of like swirling in a little bit I'll hold this I'll bring this down will that help I'll angle it a little bit just so you can see what I'm doing with this dark bit this is all going to be dark up here because um, I want lighter areas we said we need to keep the light bits don't we because they're clouds So the other thing I've never had a try at is acrylic pouring, which is what nearly everybody was um, doing last year. We sold loads of the stuff. Um, but again, I haven't got the space at home. But equally, because my classroom is also my studio, I don't have... Um, you know, now I could do it because, well, I can't because it's, it's, it's a packing room now. Um, bubble wrap and parcels and boxes and wrapping um, cover all of the tables where where you want sat um, but you need a lot of space one thing I started to do about four years ago was to make my own paper out of tumble dryer lint um, and that worked really, really well. However, the downside for that is you also need miles of space for each sheet of paper to dry. And you need space for the, the blender, the liquidizer. You need space for the, the bucket to lift it out. And so that's what you never see. You know, when you watch these YouTube tutorials... You never see the space that's required to do these things. You know, like me, you think, um, you see this video here, but you don't see that I've got crates of stuff all over the place. Acrylic pouring, yeah, I've never done it. Um, but everybody was into it last year, and it looks so fun. leave that and have a swig of tea and then we can look at going slightly darker now I haven't blended that line in as much because that is going to be where the cloud shape the cloud line is I'm not going to go as far as 9b so whatever your darkest pencil is leave it because we need the really dark so mine is a 9b that really dark we're going to do some silhouettes of um, fir trees do i need that lamp on no i don't Could maybe use a bit of 9B up the top, but um, let's see how we get on. It's going to be 11 bongs now. It 
it's on the rare occasion actually on time it, it, it gains about three minutes a day but Wednesday night is a wind, is my wind up Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings are when I wind all my clocks up so um, it's still pretty much in time but if I'm teaching from home I'm gonna have to make sure that's on time because especially if you time your cups of tea um, by the clock The living room one is slightly out today. Oh, there's music. The bird song's finished. Let's get let's get the bird song back. Again. I don't realise it disappears. So we build up, you can see how the lightning is really starting to come to the fore. Oh, hang on, sorry, hang on. I think I just might have got my ear on the camera there as I wiggled to get comfy. <sighs> okay. Oh, let's maybe a six or seven B. Avoiding the nine Bs. I do want to go a little bit darker now. So again, swirly motion because we're sort of creating this cloud shape. And you'll see the darker you do this, the more the lightning is going to stand out. So this is in between the pinky bits of the clouds. This can be a little bit more random. But be careful because you may think you're being random and in actual fact you are being far from random and every every so many lines or so many squiggles you'll make the same shape and therefore it will look like you've printed it or something. Um, so do a little bit, stand back, and then do another little bit, because, honestly, you'll think you're being random, and it, it doesn't work in that way. I'm saving that corner for a 9B, I think, the top left. Top right, sorry, I knew I was going to die. I was doing so well today with my left and my right. Sort of an area of cloud that goes over some of this lightning. Well, that makes it quite interesting because it sort of like cuts through 
I'll smudge this in a sec, I'm just trying to build up as much dark. So you can see it's starting to show the lights against the darks. Now we've actually started putting the darks in. I mean, it's a bit obvious when you think about it, but maybe it oh, it's what it's gone very cold in here. I think my heating's gone off. I might have to not be as tight today and put the heating on a bit longer. And if you want to dirty your smudgy stick up so it's like mine, this is the way to do it. Keep building up. How dirty is yours now, Rosemary? Because I know you struggle to get yours dirty. I've said before, the thing that made mine help, help make mine get dirty was the fact that I, I did cut it into a point rather badly with a craft knife. And um, since then... It seems to be a lot more absorbent on the edges. I, I don't want to cut it again. I, li I like it a bit more blunt for what I want to do with it. But um, I realise that's not going to work for everybody. A little bit that I need to get back. Starting to get a little bit dramatic. Wow, it's taken ages to grub up, isn't it yours?
Hey, that's amazing. Um, yeah, fairly fine line, Brenda, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> you know what? My hands are surprisingly clean. Yesterday's class, they weren't. They were absolutely filthy. But um, today, fairly clean. I might do a little bit of 9B work in a bit. <coughs> I want that um, top corner there to be nice and dark. I need to sharpen the pencil as well. want this nice and dark Don't worry, I'm going to stop in a sec. I'm go I've got to go for a hobble. I can't sit for too long. So I'm not putting any 9B down the bottom end. But what's 
happened is because I didn't sharpen my pencil well enough. I've got some scratches in my work, which is from the wood. So I might have to quickly use a bit of the... graphite stick to fill in the cracks and then smudgy stick and then I will stop for five have a hobble and then we can work on the, the trees down the bottom very shiny now. <clears throat> I'll show you how you can get some layers in clouds and stuff as well more so than just what we're doing here. for a humble. Let's see if I can sharpen this pencil. And it is a little bit better than it looks on the screen.
pencil sort of um, broken down the bottom. I, I must have dropped it on the floor at some point. Never mind. Difficult to get a good point. So if you sort of want to build up layers of clouds, you can just use a putty eraser and sort of flatten it in a flat bottom, but it's just like pinch it. I know it's a bit weird, but make a really random shape out of it. And then just print it over the top of parts of your sky. And it will create lighter areas and darker areas. But it won't just look like a blob. Because you've created... An interesting shape for it. It's a good way of building up layering in the sky. You don't want to go go mad. with it, just, just little bits here and there, and it shows that you've got cloud and light and all that kind of stuff. You can sort of like wiggle it if it doesn't print off well, if you've got a lot of graphite on here. Um, you can roll it across. There's no right or wrong because you can always put it back again. You see, that's what's really good about this. It's not like other uh, disciplines of art. Oh, that sounds a bit scary, doesn't it? Calling it a discipline, um, where once it's in, it's in. I need to just accentuate the lightning a little bit more. Didn't get out a little bit, that's a bit better. I'm just having to use my uh, paper stump around parts of the lightning just to bring back that so you can feel it is stormy and all of that kind of thing. Oh, I forgot to put my heating on when I went to get up. Never mind. I mean, technically, this is something you could spend hours and hours on building up the dark, building up the layers. You could work on a, 
a different sort of uh, scene as well with lightning. I did a watercolour class years and years ago, so it was more of a, a landscape rather than a portrait uh, paper. And it was a um, dramatic sky, but what we did is we, um, in watercolour, we painted the whole page sort of cream, a very pale cream, and then did masking fluid for the lightning on top of the cream watercolour, and then dropped in loads of blues and greys, um, and painted a, a sort of silhouette of a hill with one wintry tree on behind the lightning or in front of the lightning rather and then when we rubbed out the masking fluid it was really quite effective so if you notice on the um excellent well that's good we're going in there marie hmm. the the thursday classes now these morning classes i've made it a little bit more streamlined and methodical and I'm, I'm going to have to get up, so I will put my heating on, because I forgot my class book with all my lists in. Hang on a sec. Oh. So with these um, Thursday classes, now the Thursday morning classes, because I have, um, I've had to make the decision last year to not do as many hours. So cause I've been working 70 odd hours, 72 hours a week. Um, good, it's fine. I work a bit fast April. Um, so, the, so somewhere in the middle we'll, be all, we'll meet. Um, because I was working 72 hours a week solidly, which was sort of um, six days and four evenings a week, some nights, some weeks, um, which was a bit much. However, since I've slowed down, it's where I'm getting ill um, because my body's not used to it. It's had like six years of, of, of constantly on the go. Anyway, I'm not doing my Thursday evening watercolour beginners class, which was once a month. So what I've done is these Thursday morning classes, and you may not have spotted it, the first Thursday of each month, is always going to be drawing. So if you want to learn how to draw, but you think maybe the Wednesday or the Tuesday evening classes are a bit a bit more advanced for you, then you can make sure uh, the, first, the first Thursday of every month here is pencil. The second Thursday of every month on a morning is always watercolour. The third Thursday of every month, the third, yeah, in, in the Thursday morning, is always acrylics. The fourth Thursday is generally either gouache or pastel or charcoal or watercolour pencil, something that isn't one of the other three. So the first Thursday morning each month is pencil, second Thursday morning each month is watercolour, third Thursday morning each month is acrylic. So it, it gives the option that if you didn't want to attend every week, um, you've got structure that the first or the one one Thursday every month you can do a specific medium um, so a reminder Monday mornings are uh, 45 minute demonstrations because we, we used to meet at Great Borton Vintage Hall um, pre-pandemic and we'd be meeting there for eight years um, and now so, and that's a slightly different format because uh, I was, I, I've now taken over the art group, but originally I was just a tutor at the art group, and I would uh, do a 45 minute demo, and then the whole class has until, like it's 10 till 1, so 10 till, 10 till 11-ish was the demo, and then from 11 till 1, they had the chance to do the painting of whatever the demo was. Um, so Monday mornings is the same format, you get a 45 minute demo, um, Monday evenings is watercolour, Tuesday afternoons fortnightly is acrylics, Tuesday evenings 
is drawn to acrylics. So one evening we do, uh, one Tuesday we do drawing, the following Tuesday we do acrylics, but doing the same reference image. Two separate pictures, but it's amazing how it, you learn how to draw. So next Tuesday we're doing, uh, Tuesday evening we're doing snowdrops in pencil. The following Tuesday evening we're using the same picture, but doing a, a brand new painting of those snowdrops in acrylics but you're learning tone and form and shape by doing the drawing first. Wednesday afternoons is always drawing classes. Thursday mornings, obviously, art for the anxious. Thursday afternoons is always watercolour. Friday mornings, once a month, we do a uh, art history lecture, and that's on Discord. Um, Friday afternoons is watercolours, but that's repeated um, about three months behind the other watercolour classes. The first Saturday of every month we do a free demonstration, which was this, this Saturday. Um, the second Saturday of each month we do calligraphy class. And the third or fourth Saturday each month we do a full day master class. Uh, this one is actually free in January. The 23rd of January we're doing brush pen calligraphy because it coincides with National Handwriting Day. Um, and the second Sunday of each month is also a watercolour class. Um, we were going to do um, arty parties on Sunday afternoons, which includes Prosecco, afternoon tea and scones, and, and an art class. But obviously we can't do that just yet um, because of um, the little pandemic. I don't know if you've heard about it. Um, this is going on. Uh, so, uh, yeah, everything's up in the air, but hopefully we'll get back to normal at some point. But the online classes will stay forever so whatever the online classes are um so you, you don't have to live in Banbury now and you don't have to attend the class in real life if you've got if you've got a bad back or if you live in Canada um or wherever and you're five hours behind you can always catch up and do it whenever so this is what's really wonderful so what you can do those of you that have just joined the group today you can stay in this group um if you want to watch this video again and again but i will ask if you want to watch any of the other lessons that you do pay for them um we, we do run them on honesty and trust and we've never been let down yet i can see who watches all of the videos and and for how long and who hasn't who hasn't paid but i'd rather not have to chase it that kind of stuff so if you look through and um, there's a topics section in in this group um, if you look on topics, it'll say live lesson or reference. Um, skim through the references and go, ooh, maybe um, I fancy doing that one. And then just book it. So we've got two sections on our online shop. We've got 2020s classes and we've got 2021s classes. Um, the 2020 classes run from June. Um, so you can access all of our recorded lessons from June to December. Uh, if you want to watch something that's already happened or you can uh, so that's on a separate class um, listing online or you can book we, I, I was going to put them all together but then I thought it's really confusing because it just gets long lists that you have to scroll through so they're going to be in year sections right so with the 9b it's coming up to 22 and we do finish round about 12. Um, I want to put the silhouettes of some fir trees in here. Um, oh, now that, I think April, I think that was, I don't think it's even in this booklet, I think it's in the last one. Yeah, I don't, I don't have it here. Um, that was a Tuesday evening drawn to acrylics. And I think it was December, November or December, and it was um, a spooky autumn forest or something like that. So that was Tuesday evening drawn to acrylics. I'm almost certain. I do a lot of forests. I like trees. I like a bit of drama. Ask Jackie. Interesting with that one, April, and I will I will do this in a second. But I I'm, I waffled to help you 
calm down and to catch up really um that spooky forest one with the path and the trees and i can remember showing it on the on the uh, sunday that was a tuesday evening so one week we did it in pencil the following week we did it in acrylics and um i actually added a, a barn owl in the branches and i also used glow in the dark paint um in the background so when it went dark not pitch black but when dusk settles in it had a beautiful eerie glow um coming through the back of the forest it was wonderful i sold that within um 10 hours of posting it on social media uh, which was fascinating and wonderful so whoever bought that thank you i can't remember um right fir trees they're not tricky to do really just going to do a few lines as dark as i can and varying heights maybe a tall one there and don't have them all leaning in the same direction something like that Oh, do yeah. I'm I'm fairly sure that's a Tuesday evening drawn to critics November, um, November lesson. So we do these sticks, and then it's just a matter of doing little wiggles from either side. You don't even have to take your pencil off the paper. So get a bit bigger. If you're shivery. This is a 9B, um, Brenda, although it's broken. You know when you drop a pencil in it, the lead just shatters in several places, so each time you sharpen it, it just falls off. That's what's happening with this one, which is annoying. It must have fallen on the, a hard floor because these pencils don't break very well, very easily, so I've, I've somehow I've abused it. Good job I didn't knock it on the floor today, though, because I wouldn't have been able to pick it up. <laughs> Can you see a bit of a wiggle? And doing all the wiggly bits at the top first. And it doesn't matter if you've got bits of um, trunk showing through in places. Is this your first class, April? No, do you know? We've got a few newbies today, and it's lovely. I love it. You know, the one thing that the pandemic has done positively for my business is that it kicked me up the bottom to do online classes. That the the frustrating thing is that we've had the the ability to do this for years but never had the incentive. Um, and I wish I'd done it a long time ago, I really do. Because the, the amount of people it's been able to reach who wouldn't normally be able to do classes. And for those that work weird patterns or shifts, um, it means that they can sign up to a class, which is also the reason why I don't need to do as many evening classes this Monday and Tuesdays. Because um, I can sign up to a class and watch it as many times as they want or whenever they want because we do have people joining in from America and uh, Canada and France um, which is wonderful we love it and never ever dream that our tiny little art shop would be able to reach such a wide range of people from all over the world it's lovely well welcome out April I'm hoping it won't be your last either. Did you did you come off the back of Saturday's demo? Pen techniques for buildings in the February um, demo, aren't you? If either I'm in doubt for a sky and I want to do a big sky study like this, and I think oh. 
I don't want to just do sky. I need something at the bottom. Generally, I'll do fir trees. Because it's a good way of um, filling in a base with a bit of interest. I know when we've done um, some like cosmos space scenes. Well, this is it, and it is a tiny classroom. Um, I mean, everybody is really amazing and friendly. Um, Rosemary, you can vouch for that, can't you? Um, but the online classes are a really good way because you don't feel under pressure. You're not. You don't feel you're going to be judged by someone. You're not in the classroom, by the way. Um, everybody all feels the same way, um, and sometimes it can be a competition on who says who's done what worse. Um, it's like mine's rubbish. Oh no, mine's far worse than yours. No, mine's far worse than that. Well, mine's far worse than any of you. Um, we try not to encourage that. Oh, yes, I am going to do um, sort of, well, next Monday morning, um, I'm doing a demo of a hay bale with a star-filled galaxy sky in acrylics. So that's going to be an evening one, but it's going to have stars and maybe a bit of Milky Way in it. Not the chocolate bar. Um, but, uh, yeah. No, the, the, this is where the online classes have really come into their own. Um, especially especially with students that, that are more anxious, it means that they... You know, even if the anxious, the anxiety side of this lesson is because we do get people with a lot of mental health problems as well who try to take up art as um, a bit of mindfulness. But sometimes getting into a classroom can be more anxiety inducing than actually doing the lesson. And we don't ever want that. Um, so this means that those with anxiety issues can still take part and benefit from the relaxing nature of the class. Are you enjoying yourself, April? Have you got somebody else new today? Clemmy, you're new, aren't you? And I think there's somebody else. Hopefully you're all enjoying yourselves anyway. I think you'll come back. Another day going to fill the base of this in. Good. Good answer, Clemmy. You can come back. <laughs> Do you know what? Um, I, I, Marie, I, a few students have said that to me in the past. Um, what these classes help is that you fo you're not forced, no one's forced to do anything, but you know what I mean, you feel compelled to carry on at a point when you might have given up and binned it. Um, and sometimes it's working past that point where you think, oh, this is awful, a three-year-old could have painted better or drawn better. Um, but actually, watercolours and... Um, oh, wonderful. Where, whereabouts in Banbury have you moved to? Or have you not moved yet? Um, with watercolours and drawing, because you're working from light to dark, the issue is that it's the dark that makes the the depth and everything in a painting. So um, it's not until the darks go on. So in watercolours, I will often say. We're at the bit now where you think a child will have done this. Um, 
and um, push past that and then you'll end up with something that's a little bit better than you might think you could you could do and then take a photo of it and um, it's even better I know I know you like um you like the company don't you in the classes Rosemary as well so although we have got discord occasionally obviously not 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 when I'm not in the classroom but discord is a free online platform that you can sign up to um, and you can chat to me directly in my ear and you can chat to other students as well some don't like it because if they are a chatty person um, they end up distracting themselves um, and then missing everything that they're supposed to be learning um, oh bless you Rosemary I remember your first class And I remember, I remember how you felt after your first class as well. Um, and it's uh, it's wonderful to see your confidence grow and develop over. How long have you been coming now? How long have you been suffering me for, Rosemary? A year, year and a half. And you still keep coming back. <laughs> I think enjoying yourself. I mean, I used to work in primary education, and I was I was a bit of a strict teacher then because I was I used to teach in an inner city school, and um, obviously the kids had to had to do a certain level of learning, kind of required by law. Um, so you have to be a little bit strict. Um, also, I was very young. I was only in my early twenties at that point. Uh, two years, wow. Um, and, you know, I have to try and keep control of a year six class. It's not always easy. If I went back into education again now, primary ed, I think I'd be teaching in a totally different manner and a totally different way because I've learned a lot. You you grow a lot, don't you, in, in life. And you, you know, you know, all the best training in the world can't ever prepare you for real life. It's the same as when you do a driving lesson, isn't it? That's very different to actually driving yourself when there's nobody else in the car. Um, but they prepare you for certain things. Um, but yeah, with, with adult education, I know from experience and from training that many of um, many adult have had negative experiences at school um, in their own learning. So it's a big hurdle to come back into a sort of classroom setting again um, to try and rekindle something that you maybe were told you had no talent for um, so a lot of a lot of confidence needs to be rebuilt and restored and um, it's what we do in our classes really um, we have a lot of fun we have a huge laugh don't we Rosemary usually at my expense but occasionally at somebody else um, and uh, I think you, you have to enjoy yourself because that's where you where you learn. I don't think I can do any more. Look at this. It's a little bit shiny, so um, it won't look the same as if uh, as as when I take a photograph. I might have to sort of like tweak the contrast a little bit. When I when I do get back, I think I'll be at the shop tomorrow if if I can and if the weather's all right. I'll have to remember to sharpen my pencils on my my really nice desktop sharpener to uh, to ensure I've got a good point on that nine B and it's not totally broken. But hopefully you've um, it's not always at yours, Rosemary. Only when you do rude things um, and we don't notice. <laughs> makes you sound like you're a right weirdo doesn't it but you're not um occasionally occasionally paintings can um look slightly odd can't they uh that we do at, at some times and uh we just have a laugh nobody's ever ridiculed by the way uh marie you might be able to um 
either turn it into cloud or dab it with a if you dab it a few times over with a putty eraser you might be alright if you dab it wiggle your putty rubber dab it wiggle dab wiggle then stroke over it you should be able to um, lift it off although I have gone over I have gone over some of the lightning with these trees glad you enjoyed it Brenda it's lovely to have your company and you can see the, the graphite I've got a lot of layer on here so it is shiny but um, hopefully you can see how the effects of this works you are with your dinosaurs often in rosemary's watercolor classes we have we have a you know like you can see images in clouds and trees sometimes we can see um animals or dinosaurs in rosemary's art it's really wonderful but yeah nobody's really killed or made fun of on purpose at all in our classes uh, but we do recommend a sense of humour. Because I can't help myself sometimes. Um, there is a video shared. Oh, good, Janet. I'm, I'm pleased. And you've done some amazing... Look at me waggling my smudgy stick at you. You've done some amazing things, um, Janet. You really have. Yeah, I, po I posted a video on the shop page recently um, of some clips of where I just fell apart laughing at myself. Um, I lost 20 minutes of that lesson through laughter, but, uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes it's exactly what we need, isn't it, to get through. Good, I'm glad, Janet, I really am. Well, you know what? I wasn't going to mention Elizabeth Tower, Rosemary. <laughs> that was an interesting lesson. Um, good. You did break me that day. I had to leave the classroom because I was in hysterics. Um, what a lovely lesson that was. Um, but I do have to say that you know if if you scroll through um at the topic section in this in this group there's a section uh, there's a topic called student student pictures um i don't keep on top of it very often i'm afraid i don't tag them we're not as often as i should but um you'll see that uh, what people are posting is really really good stuff and a lot of them would would call themselves beginners um or dabblers but it, it's amazing what you can do. Um, because, you know, in a lesson like this, there are so many ways you can do it. And I'll say this quickly before I go. Um, you can paint with me live, or draw with me live, whatever I'm doing, live. Or you can sit and watch. And maybe fiddle to get an idea of tone. So, so like if you've never done a fir tree before, you could just have a scrap bit of paper and work out how to do the fir trees. Um, and then you can go back to it and um, or practice colour mixing that I'm talking about in a painting class or something and then you can go back um, after dinner or, or lunch or what have you and then re-watch it and do it again at your own speed or you can just sit, watch and chat um, on here you know, with your comments um, and enjoy the lesson and enjoy the companionship and then do you do your own lesson at another time as well that suits you or you can do it live now and i know a few do this actually they watch live now they join in live now but then they do it again later on that day or in a couple of days i also have some students that will binge watch classes so they'll book i don't know a week's worth and then um they'll have a whole weekend saturday and sunday instead of watching netflix um they'll uh, They'll do art classes and they'll, they'll do two or three classes a day and just have a whole day or a weekend of doing art. Whatever is best for you is, is the way to go. Um, we don't mind how you do it, to be honest. Um, we just love to, to have you here and we love to be able to pass on the skills. So I'm so pleased you've enjoyed yourselves and I'm so pleased to have your company today. 
um, next week is watercolour next Thursday morning and we're doing something really cool we're going to use one brush so we're going to, it's going to be mainly brush techniques but to create very simple flowers so it's not going to be a full-on picture it'll be lots of techniques next week maybe it'll form a little bit of a a picture or maybe we'll do it landscape and split it in half we've got one page for one half of the page for the techniques the other half to put them all together to create something so it'll be something like a number four round brush or something that we're going to use um to create uh, thank you brenda so do i because i'm a big baby and i don't like being in pain um and i'm a man which makes it worse and uh, and i've got nobody here to moan at Um, you could, the only thing with embossing the lightning is, because the bigger lightning is much brighter and wider, um, you wouldn't be able to emboss something that wide. But you could emboss um, some of the lightning, so if you did go over it, you'd still get a thin line. So you could do that, absolutely. You could do that for certain. I'll just wait for the bongs before I dismiss the class. It's an old Bakelite mantel clock in, in, on my bookshelf. It's gorgeous. And it only doesn't keep time well um, because I haven't worked out the pendulum and I haven't bothered. I just keep tweaking the hands. Right, so thank you so much for, for joining me, and I do hope to see you in um, whichever class. For, fortunately for me, April, it's only my back that's unwell. Um, you know, in terms of health-wise, and um, I'm all right. So it's just managing the pain, really. But some uh, oh, during this lockdowny thing, I'll either be at home or I'll be working from um, working from the shop if we get lots of online orders Jackie and I will go in um, and Jackie does the orders while I teach um, so yeah it, it, it will be very much especially while I'm fairly incapacitated it, it, I, I could be I could be here or I could be there it depends how well I feel um, at the moment, it takes me about an hour to two hours to just get ready, 20 minutes to put socks on, that kind of thing. So the morning classes are quite hard for me to make sure I'm in town for. Diolch yn fawr. Oh, thank you, Marie. So take care, everybody, and I'm sure I will see you all very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.